Fresh off another better than expected year, Grand Theft Auto publisher Take-Two Interactive looks to keep the momentum going with several new product releases. Joining me today to discuss the company's outlook is Take-Two's chairman and CEO, Strauss Selnick. Thanks for stopping by. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Before we even get going, NBA 2K17, Paul George, where's LeBron? I mean, the guy just won the championship. What's up with that? <laughs> What's going on? You know, we try to freshen it every year and give fans what they want. And I think, I think the team at Visual Concepts and, and 2K continues to think ahead about what will be exciting at the time. And, uh, you know, we get a lot of basketball players. Uh, we, we get a lot of personalities. Sometimes it's fun to showcase someone new and exciting. I mean, do you think, like, with LeBron, all this craziness that's been going on post-win will help the sales? I mean... Uh, I think it's... I think any news in this instance probably good news. Sure. You know, it, this is a... You know, the game of basketball is turning into a bunch of stories. And what's exciting about NBA 2K is you can tell your own story. You can get involved. It's not just a sports simulation game. It's also a role-playing game. It's a strategy game. And the deeper it gets, the more engaged people can be, you know, the better we do with it. Yeah, it's come a long way since I was playing on Nintendo, that's, that's for sure. It's amazing. The game that everybody probably knows you for is Grand Theft Auto. And as a former gamer, I still try to play here and now, and I used to cover the Take-Two as an analyst. You know, why so long between releases? What does that process look like? I mean, you've had Grand Theft Auto 5, great success. I think over 65 million copies sold. So far, but yeah. after two and a half years. You know, what, what takes so long between the releases? Well, we aim for perfection. And, you know, we have the highest Metacritic scores at our company across all of our releases and across both of our labels. Um, Grand Theft Auto stands alone, not just for our company, but for the industry. And the team at Rockstar are always trying to create something that's completely new, and, and they seek perfection. And uh, they come very, very close. And the scores imply that they've achieved it. I think if you ask the team, they would say, no, 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 we still have plenty more to accomplish. You know, we're obviously thrilled with the result. That takes time. And one of the things that we're known for at our company is, you know, with, with the exception of our sports entertainment releases, we're not on a clock. You know, we aim to get the most amazing results. We aim to delight consumers. And that, that takes time. And, and we won't release anything until it's truly ready. And ready means that we've done the absolute best work that we can. In the case of Grand Theft Auto V, of course, is the story of Grand Theft Auto Online, yeah. you know, which, can, which is continuing to be a living, Updates. breathing Updates. You've thing. updated a lot. You've had a lot of interesting new yeah, content. Yeah, June 7th, there was another content drop. And uh, that keeps consumers engaged. It also d d d delivers revenue to our company in the form of recurrent consumer spending. And recurrent consumer spending, which is uh, digitally d distributed revenue, excluding full game downloads, represented something like 20% of our non gap net revenue last year. You know, what does the risk look like, I mean, this year? I think, um, I, and you may have noted in your last call that moderating revenue from Grand Theft Auto, I mean, that the release late from the, everybody else seems really strong. I mean, do you risk, by not putting out a game every year, Grand Theft Auto, losing some of these, these eyeballs? Actually, to the contrary. I think by, by resting our core products uh, and not being on an annualized schedule, we build anticipation. And then, of course, we try to deliver on that anticipation by coming out with something phenomenal. And more often than not, uh, we're able to do that. So, so actually, no, I think the benefit of um, recurrent consumer spending, whether that's an online engagement or downloadable add-on content, is that it does extend the consumer experience. It does build a brand in between big spiky releases. And so I think we do have the ability to keep consumers engaged for longer than ever. You know, as you just said, Grand Theft Auto V was released nearly three years ago. We continue to sell units of the full game, both physically and digitally, and consumers have a massive engagement online. Uh, that's just not what the business looked like a, a few years ago. And that means we do have the ability to work harder and longer on releases because we believe the consumer engagement will last longer. I mean, do you think the the packaged good game, the physical game, is nearing extinction? I don't. I mean, for full games, uh, you know, for, for the consoles, physical goods still represent roughly 80% of the market for us. Obviously, for PC titles, digital distribution is about 90% of the value for us. But we're ecumenical. We want to be where the consumer is. If a consumer wants to buy digitally, great, we make it available. Consumer wants to buy a physical good, great, we make that available as well. For, for catalog, it's great to be able to do digital distribution because even if we're selling a few units, we don't have to stock it on the shelf. We don't have to take inventory risk, and our retail partner doesn't have to take inventory risk. Sure. The only, the, the biggest benefit, of course, is obviously it's less complex to distribute digitally, and we do have higher, uh, higher margins. Sure. You know, I, we, um, had E3, we sat down with Andrew Wilson, CEO of uh, Electronic Arts. Uh, and he told me for the first time in three years, they are open to acquisitions. I'm not used to hearing that from him. 
he was there when all that stuff was going on a couple years ago, and you were there too. Are you open to starting those talks again? Are you interested in something like that? We like being independent, uh, and equally, we're a public company, and we're here for the shareholders. Um, I think you know we're really proud of our track record of building value for our shareholders. Um, our stock hit another. Stock has surged since that initial one, two, 2008 bid. I think. Yeah, it's a, the stock hit another all-time high a couple weeks ago and is trading very, very well despite market fluctuations. So, and the company's very well capitalized. We have nearly a billion three in cash on the balance sheet and no debt because our convert is accounted for as though it'll be satisfied with equity. So we're a strong independent company. We like being independent. That said, we're here for the shareholders.